Welcome back to J vs. Horror. I'm your host, J Wall, and guys, it's Monday, which means it's time for five horror films you can watch for free. Now, this week we're doing something a little different. I've got something special for you guys. We are going to give you five franchises. You can watch the entire franchise for free. We're going to give you the trailers. We're going to put the links in the description below. And all you have to do is cruise down there to that description, click the link, and you can watch any one of these movies you want to. And guys, we have 15 movies for you. That means we're going to have 15 movie trailers and 15 different links in the description. Now, just to save you guys some time, I'm not going to talk very much on this episode. I'm going to simply introduce the franchises, give you just a few of my thoughts about each one, and then we're going to go straight into the trailers. And we have 15 movie trailers for you, and we will do them franchise by franchise. We will show them concurrently. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. I think this is probably the 20th episode we've done of five free movies. So if you need some great suggestions, go back and check them out. They're all in a playlist there for you on the channel. Before we get started, I do have two honorable mentions I wanted to let you guys know about. And the only reason why they didn't make it onto the list was because there was one movie in the franchise that you could not watch for free. Now, we have Silent Night, Deadly Night. And in Silent Night, Deadly Night, the only film that you can't watch for free out there is the original film. You can, however, find all four sequels on Tubi. So go check that out on Tubi.com. Also on Tubi.com, the other honorable mention that I had for this week was Phantasm. The only Phantasm movie that you cannot watch for free is Phantasm 2 because it was done by a separate studio. All right, let's get started, guys. At number five, I have Pet Cemetery. And yes, guys, this one is a little bit of a cheat. There are only two films in the franchise, but it did spawn a reboot in 2019. The first film from 1989 is, of course, an adaptation of the Stephen King novel, as is the reboot. But part two is a little different. It's a little more wacky, a little more fun. Came out around 1992. So let's take a look, guys, at the trailers for Pet Cemetery and Pet Cemetery 2. What is this place? I brought you here to bury Alan's cat. Daddy, is church all right? Why, Judge? I have my reasons. I dreamed he got hit by a car and you and Mr. Crandall buried him in the pet cemetery. What did we do tonight, Judge? What we did, Lois, was a secret. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Has anyone ever buried a person up there? May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. You're thinking thoughts that's not thought of. Something really bad. You're thinking of putting him up there. Don't deny the thought hadn't crossed your mind. Come back to me, Gage. Come back to us. Paramount Pictures presents Stephen King's all-time best-selling tale of horror. Pet Cemetery. What are you doing? Getting things ready for Mom. Mom's dead, Jack. She doesn't have to be. Something strange. Now, I didn't think much about it until I saw him drag the body out of the coffin. Something ancient. Bury your own. Something evil. Was it your idea of a joke to send me blood from a dead animal? This dog is alive. Not this dog. Something terrifying is happening in Ludlow, Maine. Again. Pick up your family and get the hell out of that town. Pet Cemetery 2. Oh, 
Jeff, honey. Your father and I need to talk. Some stories just won't stay dead. All right, horror fans. At number four, we have... I spit on your grave. Now, there are actually a lot of films in this franchise, but we chose the three from the early 2010s. They do run together. I spit on your grave, which came out in 2010, which is, of course, a remake of the 78 film, which was originally titled Day of the Woman. And then there is I spit on your grave 2, which came out in 2013. And finally, I spit on your grave 3, Vengeance is Mine, which came out in 2015. And there was another horrible installment to this franchise that came out later, but it had nothing to do with these three films. Uh, It was more connected to the original film, but it was just really, really bad. Uh, So, yeah, these are the three that we have in there, the 2010 uh, to 2015 trilogy. I think they're pretty damn good films. They're really good when it comes to just the rape-revenge genre. Because they don't focus as much on the rape part, in my opinion. They really get to the revenge, and the revenge scenes are absolutely awesome. If you're like me, you're not a big fan of seeing rape on screen, you can always just kind of fast forward through that part, right? And you can get to the good stuff, which is the revenge. Alright guys, let's take a look at the trailers for I Spit on Your Grave 1, 2, and 3. What's a pretty little thing like you doing out here all alone? Shut her up! Please. Forgive me, Father, for I will sin. It's date night. Someone did very bad things to you. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. What do you think this woman is capable of? Please, don't do this. I haven't even gotten started. We all have our vices. It's okay. I'm going to take good care of you. You think that hurts? You just wait! anymore. I really think that it would help you to spend some time around people who share your experience. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. He must be stopped and he must be punished. Somebody should do something! What do you fantasize about? Justice. A good person does the right thing even when no one's looking. Justice isn't something you receive, it's something you dish out. And how she likes it? Please! At number three, The Stepfather. That's right, from 1987, starring, of course, Terry O'Quinn in the original film. Terry would, of course, reprise the role in Stepfather 2 in 1989 alongside Meg Foster and Caroline Williams. 
But things went wrong on the set of Stepfather Part 2, and Terry pretty much found himself done with the franchise at that point. Now, Stepfather 3 came out in 1992, and it starts off with them reintroducing the character with a new actor and the plot line of the Stepfather having plastic surgery, so of course he looks different. Now, it's usually my opinion that when a film starts off with the main character having plastic surgery, that means somebody already said no. <laughs> But I do like The Stepfather Part 3. It's wacky and it's fun. And anytime The Stepfather goes nuts, it's always a great thing. You know, it's really tricky, especially with Terry O'Quinn. It's a lot of fun because there are times in these first two movies where you will find yourself rooting for Terry O'Quinn's character. And then you'll realize, oh, yeah, he's such a great guy. But he's going to kill everyone, including his wife and kids. <laughs> and like I said, when Terry O'Quinn, especially when he snaps... It is always fun to watch. Now, there is also, of course, a reboot to The Stepfather, which came out in 2009. But we're going to pretend like that one doesn't exist because it's nowhere near as good as the first three, especially the first one. Without further ado, let's take a look at the trailers for The Stepfather, The Stepfather 2, and The Stepfather 3. <laughs> Morrison isn't his real name. What is it? God knows, we don't. His personal history was falsified and his prints were untraceable. It was possible Morrison had done it before. You can call me sentimental, I don't care. I have beautiful friends, I have a wonderful new family. <laughs> so what do you think? Can we give this little guy a home? Sure. That's my girl. He's a wonderful man, and he wants to care for us. I don't know, I just, there's just something about him. Oh, that guy in Bellevue that killed his whole family, cut him up with knives. Maybe they disappointed him. All we need is a mortar out here. You're a good boy, he's a good boy, isn't he a good boy? Hey, Patty's little angel. Hi, honey. He's just some crazy creep. Don't you talk to your father that way. He's not my father. How can you even bear to let him do it to you? Stop it! We have to talk, honey. About what? About what is happening to our family. I'm taking care of it. He scares me, Dr. Pondre. Who am I here? Help me! Help! You're a very bad girl. The Stepfather. And before them, Bill Crater, they all had something in common. They were all for a time happily married, and they were all the same man. What kind of man changes names like other people change their clothes? Where do your thoughts take you? There was a, an accident, kind of. Just about anything that you'd want in a kitchen has been built in. Well, my last house had a basement workshop. I like to work with my hands. <laughs> specialize in your practice, Gene? Family guidance types of problems. Where do your thoughts take you? Phil left a little over a year ago. He's zeroing in on you, and he's ignoring everybody else. Dr. Gene Clifford, this is... Phil. Phil Grayland, Carol's husband. Why is he here? Oh, he wants a second chance. Why don't you ask Phil to stop by and have a chat with me tonight? I think it's time I cracked open this bottle. Carol, what exactly do you know about Gene? That I love him. Make room for Daddy. <laughs> Oh, I know he won't come back again. I want you gone! I don't think he'll come back this time. We're pouring our hearts out some guy who no one must diddly about. Oh, come on, Maddie. You don't even know if he's a real shrimp. You're nothing! Who the hell are you? Would you let me tell her? What are you going to tell her? More lies? Carol, I have a confession to make. She's agreed to become my wife. <laughs> you will never find a better family man than me. No! Don't tell your dress, sweetheart! Out. 
Terry O'Quinn and Meg Foster. There's something that you should know about my past. Stepfather 2. Daddy is back. In a perfect community, a perfect mom. I love you very much, Andy. Can meet a perfect stranger. You found us. I sure did. She knows what she wants. Oh, I want to make love to you. She knows what she feels. I do. But what she doesn't know. You are the most incredible man I have ever known. Could kill her. Authorities have finally come up with their first solid lead on the escaped family serial killer. What are those scars behind your ears? You're going to look like a new man. Different but quite normal. Authorities believe the wanted killer had plastic surgery and then murdered the physician at least nine months ago. I want to find out who my stepfather really is. Andy, now you're taking this too far. It's got to stop right now. You have no idea how important my family is to me. Here's the most recent photograph of the family serial killer. He's considered extremely dangerous. I know what's going on, you know. Silence is golden, Mr. Thompson. Ah! In a mind of madness. This is your home. I am your daddy. There is no right. Has he ever hurt you? There is no wrong. You just can't break up the family. There is no mercy. Oh, my God. Father 3, a family tradition continues. Sleep tight. Daddy needs a family! Don't let the bed bugs bite. At number two, Prom Night. Now, the original Prom Night is a 1980 Canadian slasher film directed by Paul Lynch. It starred, of course, the great scream queen Jamie Lee Curtis and Leslie Nielsen, and the plot follows a group of high school seniors who are targeted at their prom by a mass killer seeking vengeance for the accidental death of a girl six years earlier. Now, the three sequels, Prom Night 2, 3, and 4, don't really have anything to do with the original film, but they are good in their own right. Prom Night 2 is actually a lot better than anyone remembers, and 3 and 4 are fun, of course, as cheesy sequels. Guys... Let's take a look at the trailers for Prom Night, Prom Night 2, Prom Night 3, and of course, Prom Night 4.
Vicky's getting ready for the prom. Good morning, prom queen. Only nominated, not the winner. But she's about to get a visit from the past. I've been seeing things. Hallucinations about Mary Lou Maloney. That girl who died at our school. My mind plays strange tricks. It's not my mind, damn you. It's Mary Lou Maloney. We're in trouble, you and me. What are you talking about? Mary Lou Maloney has come back. It's like I'm not in control of myself. I am afraid I might hurt somebody. Somehow her spirit has come back from the grave and she will come after you and me. This is the only thing that will protect you. Do you be gone? Be gone? Come on. You're not leaving this house. Now, Mary Lou has found her way back. And Mary Lou is coming out to party. This is Alex Gray. He's intelligent. He's athletic. He's an average guy. There's lunch. Is there anything you like? This is Mary Lou Maloney. She's a good sport. Touchdown! She's sexy. She's dead. He was looking for something different. She was looking for something new. But when they got together, it was something deadly. You really gotta stop killing people. Those kind of girls, you just fool around with them once, they turn on you, they rip your heart out, show it to you, and then they dance all over it with their spike heels and ram it down your throat. Well, what about our relationship? What relationship? You kill them, I marry them in the football field. This is not your basic boy meets girl here. No, that's it, it's over. Alex! But even hell hath no fury like Mary Lou Maloney. And on prom night, Alex Gray will learn breaking up is hard to do. Prom night three, The Last Kiss, a romantic comedy from hell. Women. The Cube franchise, starting in 1997 with the independent science fiction horror film Cube. We then move on to Part 2, which came around in 2002, simply titled Cube 2. And then we have a prequel in 2004 
titled Cube Zero. Now, each one of these films revolves around pretty much the same thing. A group of strangers wake up in a mysterious cube and they go from room to room trying to find their way out only to realize that some of these rooms contain deadly traps. So you can see that Cube kind of serves as a precursor to films like Saw. And there has been talk as recently as this year of doing a remake of the original film and bringing back the original director. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. Let's take a look at the trailers for Cube, Cube 2, and Cube Zero. A cube. 26 rooms high. 26 rooms across. 17,576 rooms. Anybody remember how they got here? Why would they throw innocent people in here? Are we being punished? There's a way in here, so there's got to be a way out. Do you think they'd go to all the trouble to build this thing if we could just walk out? Take a good long look around. But I got a feeling it's looking at us. We have about three days without food and water before we're too weak to move. I just want to wake up. I looked in the room down there and something almost cut my head off. Motion detectors integrated into the walls. Tough to spot. We're not getting out of here. Yes, we are! There is no way out of here! We need to get around the trap. They're identified by prime numbers. Figure it out. I can't! I'm not dying in a rat maze! No more talking. No more guessing. You gotta save yourselves from yourselves. What the hell is going on? We haven't been moving in circles. The rooms have. We are the key. The cube is us. Subject located. Here we go. No! And there you have it. Well. It's like some kind of code we have to figure out. She's doing better than most. Half of them don't even notice the letters, let alone the map. Don't get involved. She doesn't stand a chance. Of course she has a chance. Yeah? You gonna ride in on your white horse and whisk her out? She's gonna die in there and she's probably innocent. What are you doing? You're not allowed in there. No! I'm inside. 
are you? I've come to help. Letters. He just disappeared. They know I'm here. Move it! Get a squad to the exit point. Run! They're playing with us. Prepare to die. Don't I get a choice? Don't all the condemned get a choice? that's all we have for this episode of five free films i hope you guys enjoyed the show because this one was very time consuming we had to find the links to 15 different films and you know put up 15 different trailers so yeah it was a uh, a project we'll just say that don't forget to like and subscribe guys check us out every week we're also doing our top 10 horror films of the last two decades We started that off in 2001 and did a top 10 for each year until 2020, which comes later this week. And then we will have our top 10 films of the last two decades ready for you on New Year's Day. Guys, as always, we will talk to you the next time you've got something worth talking about. Bye.